morning, how we doing? Welcome to the river. I'm Pastor Matthew. It's your first time here. We're glad that you're here and worshiping with us today in what is my favorite hour, uh, third hour, so it's exciting stuff. I do have some, a little bit more news and a decision I made this week with our leadership team. Uh, we're changing our service times again. And uh, the good news is for you, those of you who come at 1130, it has no effect on you, all right? So you have to keep coming at 1130, but our other two worship hours are now going to be at 830 and 10, and uh, because we're just continually trying to make more room for more people, amen? And uh, that's a, uh, here's how it's going to work, man. It's my third time, so the more you talk to me, the faster I talk, the sooner you get to Casa Brava. Come on. <laughs> Anybody with me? Come on. No Casa Brava fans? All right, stinks to be you guys, but that's where I'm going, all right? So, so here's the deal. So 8.30, 10, and 11.30, but man, I am most excited about the fact I've been gone for a few weeks, and it's good to be back. Uh, I had the privilege of being with our students last week and some of our leaders in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, it's kind of a pilgrimage place for me to go, and exciting that always to be in Birmingham at the Church of the Highlands, but also at the Motion Conference where 13,000 teenagers and high school and college students engaged in worship being the king of kings. And it was amazing, amazing, amazing time. And so we are fired up for day one. Hello, come on, of 21 days of prayer. Anybody as excited about 21 days of prayer as I am? I don't really believe it, all right? So, but let me just give you the breakdown of the week. So it's kind of how it's going to work. We pray for 21 straight days, which means we're going to go to church for 21 straight days. We're going to worship in this room together. So tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we will be in this room. There'll be worship. There'll be the word. And then we're going to go to work and we're going to pray. All right, and so that's kind of how that works Monday through Friday. Then we pray at 9 a.m., same thing, at 9 a.m. on Saturday. We chose 9 a.m., not so you can sleep in because how many fingers I got, and I figured it was easy just to remember nine, all right? And so there's no magic about the hour of 9 a.m. It's just very simple. 9 a.m. is when we're going to meet on Saturday, same identical thing, and then we pray in our services on Sunday. And so that's just kind of how we do the 21 days of prayer. And so, man, I just want you to know that I believe that God wants to flourish in your life over the next 21 days, all right? I believe he wants to do something in you, and ultimately he wants to do something through you. And that's, kind of, that's what I've been praying for for a few months, actually. I've been, I've been praying for 21 days of prayer for a couple months as we were getting ready for it, and I was on my break, and just really praying, saying, God, would you give me a word that I can share with our people in the house that we call the River Church? And, and, uh, and in this house... Uh, uh, what is it going to look like? And what is prayer? And what is the culture of prayer going to look like? And so I believe that God has showed up and given me that. And so I believe that it's for somebody in this room. But here's what I know. I don't want you to hear from me. I want you to hear from God. And so here's what I want you to do. I just want you to stand up right where you're at and uh, kind of help me out. Go ahead, stand up. I'm not going to do anything crazy to you, all right? It's very simple. It's something I learned this week. How many people have got a little stress in your life right now? Anybody? How many people got maybe a little fear in your life? How many people got some challenges in your life right now? I learned that this is a scientific proof and proven that this is true, that if you put your hands above your head like this, you na- it's an instant, if you leave it there for at least two minutes, your stress level will go down. Now, the American Psychological Association believes they figured something out. I'm here to tell you, uh, wow, you guys are already doing it. I didn't even ask yet. This is impressive, all right? So I like the way this service works. That's why you're my favorite service, all right? Hey, by the way, hey, real quick, put your hands down because I'm going to need somebody. Are there any Taylor people in the room? Real quick, just like Taylor athletes. Okay, that's perfect. So we, we can do this. We're not recording this hour. So can we welcome to my right, your left, the women's soccer team from IWU? Can we do that real quick? Good to have you here. Hey, can you guys cheer them on real quick? Can we do that better? All right. Now, ladies, I'm just going to say, if you start barking at them, <laughs> we're going to have a very big issue. <laughs> Actually, I think it'd be hilarious. And also, and we are privileged to have the IW football team with us today. Can we welcome them, River Church? All right. Nothing? You guys don't have anything for them? That's it? All right. But here's what we're going to do. So I've learned this, and, and little does the APA realize that The scriptures have been telling us to worship like that forever. Matter of fact, 
prior to the last couple months, man, I used to worship like this. I'd put my hands out like that, and I'd worship. And it was always like, God, what are you going to give me? Give me, give me, give me, give me. Anybody feel like that? You're just asking God all the time for something. And so, God, just fill me up. Just fill me up. But, man, I've kind of changed my way because this right here is actually, when I, you turn them out, it's a sign of surrender. And my prayer is, is that over the next 21 days that you would surrender all of who you are to God. All of it. Whether it be soccer, football, job, career, school, I don't really care what it is, but just if you just, this, this, if this can just become your posture for 21 days, I'll guarantee your stress level goes down. So here's what I want you to do, because I don't want you to hear from me, I want you to hear from God. Now I want you to surrender him to God. And I just, right there on your own, right there in your seat, wherever you're at, I want you to pray and ask God right now, God, fill me up. I'm surrendered to you. And God, I pray right now as we kind of take on this position of surrender, God, I pray, God, as our hands are open to you, that, God, we surrender everything we have in these next few moments to you and your spirit and your power. And we're asking for you to do something that only you can do. God, may these people hear from you and not hear from me today. May they have an encounter with the Holy Spirit today. May you manifest yourself in this service today. May, may you heal people. May you set people free in these moments. In your name I pray. And everybody said, hey, give your neighbor a fist bump and say, let's get ready to roll, all right? Come on. You can be seated. Yeah, you can sit down. It's good stuff. Also works out your shoulders, man. I worship so much. We went to church like seven straight days, man. I was like this forever, man. Besides that, I was able to hang with those teenagers. So I, was, I still think I could be a youth pastor. But this is what I've been praying over you. It's found in Ephesians chapter 1, where it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I've literally been praying this prayer over our church and over our city and over all the cities that we have campuses in and that we're trying to campus in and where I believe God's calling us to go. But I've been praying that for us as a people would have a, have a, have a spirit of wisdom and revelation that goes far beyond what we can do in our own physical realm so that you may know him better. At the River Church, our first thing is we want people to know who? We want people to know God, all right? And it's very simple. We want people to know God, but how do you get to know God? Well, we're going to talk about that. Very simple is you pray to him. You communicate with him. You have a relationship with him. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I'd love to chat with you about what it means to give your whole life to Jesus, what it means to truly know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I'm asking, I've been praying that God, would you enlighten people's lives? Would you open their eyes? Would you remove the scales of sin? Would you open their ears to hear the message? Would you, would you help them to see more of you? Well, that way they can not only just know God, but our goal is to help you find freedom. We don't want you just to walk in bondage, God, that you would enlighten them so that they can be set free from their past no matter where they've come from. This is what I've been praying goes on and he says in his incomparable great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms can I help you understand something today that when we go to God in prayer and this is what I've been praying for you is that when you go to God in prayer that the same exact power that reached down literally out of heaven and moved the moved the stone away that breathed life back into Jesus himself that same power is available to you and to me today does anybody in the room think, man, I would sure like to have some of that power in my life today. Hello? And I'm here to tell you, that's what I've been praying for for the next 21 days, is that people would, would come to know God better, that people would find the freedom, that people would be set free. But here's what I struggle with in the church today, is so many people are just walking around kind of like Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh. It's like, oh. Well, you know, things are bad. Things are bad. I'm thinking, you know, wake up. I can't take it when I see a follower of Christ like this. Oh, no, woe is me. Woe is me. I mean, I walk like that after I get out of bed in the morning. But it don't take long to be like, boom, I'm ready. And it's not because I drink a bunch of coffee which I do, but it's not. <laughs> but it's because, it's because, man, the spirit and the power that raised Jesus from the dead, hello, 
is inside of us. And you just have to open yourself up and say, God, I want that. I want that. So I was studying, man, I was thinking about this young boy. He, how many fishing guys we got in the room that love to fish? And he was fishing at a pond, and, and he wasn't catching anything. So he kept moving around the pond, cast nothing, nothing. And as he was walking around, he came upon this little creek, and he realized that this creek was what was feeding this little tiny pond, this little fishing hole that he was at. So he starts touring through, and he's walking, and he's following the creek. And as he, he follows the creek, he realizes that the creek is connect, turns into a larger stream the farther away it gets. And as he he follows this larger stream, the next thing you know, it turns into a large river. That's the part I like right there, right? Turns into a river. Get it? Anyways, you with me? You're at the river church. Turns into a river. Moving on. All right. Second hour was much quicker. All right? And, and, And they just appeased me. But anyways... And so it turns into this river, and he follows the river a little bit farther, and he realizes that it opens up in this great, vast ocean. And that literally this little fishing hole was connected to this massive, powerful force of water. Can I tell you today, that's my prayer for some of your prayer lives, is that you would recognize that right now you feel like you're just this little fishing hole but that there is a body of prayer and a power that exists around you that you're connected to that is larger than anything you could imagine. You possess the power that literally raised a man from the dead. So I'm praying that you are enlightened over the next 21 days. I'm praying that some of you athletes, you come back and hang out with us. We'd love to do life with you. You river folks, you should be here and digging in and praying. See, but I think the challenge is, is we're a lot like the disciples. We, needed an, we need an outline or a structure to know how to pray. And see, I, that's, that's like six years ago, I started a journey of prayer in my own life that, to be brutally honest with you, for the first like 18 years of my ministry that I really didn't engage in intense prayer. I prayed, but it wasn't like the centerpiece of everything I did. And six years ago, I began a journey of discovering what prayer looks like in my own life. And and I'm a little bit like the disciples. Like, I followed somebody from a distance. See, I think what happens is the disciples are, are, are looking and they're watching Jesus pray. And they show, he shows back up after he's been out in the wilderness or he's been up on the mountain or he's been in the garden. And they're like, hey, man, that's, you come back with a lot of peace, a lot of power, and a lot of passion. And we, I think I'd like to have a little bit of that. And so they, Jesus teaches them and gives them this structure and the outline on how to pray. And it's what we call the Lord's Prayer. Most of us recite it before we go on an athletic field, before we take a test, before we, whatever you start. To, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. If you're a Notre Dame fan, they put it on the big screen and, you know, it's a great thing. And everybody knows they're getting ready to come out and, you know, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, the whole thing. And they recite it. But here's the deal. The Lord never intended for that just to be a prayer that was recited. He intended it to be an outline or a structure to teach you and I how to pray. And I don't know about you, but, but I really would love in my life to have the peace, the passion, and the power. And I had a, I had a guy who, who, from a distance, I was watching pray. And I just started collecting notes. And I was like, man, I like the way he prays. And, and then I, I went to where he was, and I watched him pray because I wanted what he had. Anybody ever had that moment? Like, man, how does that person have so much peace? How does that person have so much passion? How does that person have so much power? That's where I was at. And then very quickly over the last six years, what's happened is God has transformed my life. And literally every decision in every sphere of my life is impacted by prayer. It's impacted by this connection I have with God. Three things happened for me when I started to pray. The first thing was it grounded my faith. Like it was just crystal clear that my faith was stronger than it ever had been before. It grounded me. I wasn't wishy-washy. I knew what I believed and I knew, and, I, and here's why I believed it. It grounds your faith. Somebody in the room, you need to hear that today. Your faith, you're kind of wavering in it. You're like, I don't really know if this is all true. I don't know if I buy into this. I don't know where I'm at in this journey. I'm here to tell you, if you'll start praying and God will start speaking to you, I guarantee it, it will ground your faith. Because when you hear the voice of God, you can't question it. Second thing it did is it guided my steps. I mean, there's people all the time I talk to them, like, I just don't know where to go. I just don't know what to do. I just don't have all these decisions. 
Well, if you would just simply pray, God will speak and he'll show you the direction that you're supposed to go. He'll guide your steps. The third thing it did is it guarded my heart. Everything that could have taken me down couldn't take me down because I had the power of the Holy Spirit pouring through me. Hello? Because here's the good news. Prayer connects you to God. And being connected to God will change everything in your life. Prayer ultimately connects us to a higher power. And when you're connected to that higher power, it will change every single ounce of your life, from your family to your career to the athletic fields to your classrooms to every single bit. You want your life changed? Then connect to God through prayer and your life will be changed. Is anybody with me this morning? Is anybody, how, who in the room would say, Matthew, man, I would love to have the favor and the blessing of God on my life right now? Anybody with me? If you don't have your hand up, you're crazy, all right? Because the, the other side of that is not fun. I can guarantee you that. Well, I'm here to tell you you can have that. I'll guarantee it. I was listening to a message a few weeks ago by a, by a gentleman, another pastor. I listen to about seven or eight different sermons every week as I'm studying and, and I was in podcasts, all that stuff. But I was listening to this guy and he was preaching and, and he was sharing this story about a time when he went to Bogota, Colombia to preach. He shows up in Bogota, Colombia and he's gonna preach at their midweek service. So he flies in, gets off the plane, pastor takes him to the church, they walk in and, and uh he sits down at the front of the worship center where, and he looks around. He's got about 30 minutes before the service starts at 5 o'clock, so it's 4.30 p.m. in Bogota, Colombia, and, and they're, they're sitting there, and, and all of a sudden he says, uh, he goes, wow, this is crazy. There's 4,000 people in the room 30 minutes before the service is supposed to start. Pastor's like, oh, this is just part of it. He goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, Oh, well, walk with me. And he walks him out of, the, out of the worship center and he walks down this hallway where he shows him three other worship centers that each see 800 people apiece, full to the brim. So there's 2,400 people in those rooms. And, and he's like, well, this is amazing, this is amazing. So there's 6,400 people here 30 minutes before the service is supposed to start at five o'clock. It's amazing. He goes, oh, are you serious? He goes, you want to see something else? He goes, yeah, what else do you have? And he walks up onto the up to the top floor of the, of the building. And he opens a curtain and he, and he looks out. He goes, you see, see all those people? And as, this pastor said, as far as his eyes could see down this, this road, there were people lined up. He goes, well, what is that? He goes, those are the people in line to come to the 7 o'clock service. That night, over 12,000 people gathered for a midweek service in Bogota, Colombia. The pastor says, I don't understand. How do you do this? How does this happen? How come this isn't happening in the American church? The pastor looked at him. He goes, the reason why it happens is because every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6 a.m., this worship center right here, is full of 4,000 people praying. See, ch church today, I just wanna be brutally honest with you. I think we say we wanna reach 42,000 people, but I don't know that we really do. And I know we've got visitors, so we're having a little family chat, but we'd love for you to join us in that process. There's 42,000 people in Grant County, Indiana that don't know Jesus this morning that are dying and going to a real place called hell. And I believe that now is the time and this is the place and we are the people to lead them to Jesus. But we'll never do it until we get over ourselves and, and sacrifice some things and fill this place up, not with more worship, not with more preaching, not with more children's stuff, not with more youth stuff, all those things are great. But I'm here to tell you, we gotta fill this house up with prayer. Jesus himself said that my house will be a house of prayer. You want the blessing of God on your life? You want the favor of God on your life? Then I'm here to tell you, then you better learn how to pray. See, I don't think we really, like, like it's gonna cost us something. 
I'll be brutally honest with you. I've been getting up at 4 a.m. for the past three days to get my, my body prepared for the next 21. That's just how it works. Because, man, I am that pumped up about the next 21 days because I believe that if you'll commit to pray for the next 21 days, and I get it. Some of you are like, well, I can't come here because I work out of town or I, I gotta be at work at 6 a.m. I get all that. Just make sure you're praying. But there's no reason that we can't fill this place up multiple times with people who are yearning and desiring to just see and experience the presence and the face of God. See, because here's what I've learned and realized. God doesn't move in a life of anybody who doesn't pray. You're like, I don't know why God won't move in my life. It's probably because you're not praying. God will not move in people or around people and use them if they don't pray. And I don't believe God moves in a church that doesn't pray. So as long as I'm the pastor at the River Church, this house will be a house of prayer. It will be. This is a house of prayer. The house that I lead is a house of prayer. And we are building a prayer culture and that we will pray. We just don't have bracelets that we wear around that say pray first on them for our health. It is something and it is a value, but it is more than a value. It is a lifestyle. But here's the problem in the American church today is we're too proud to actually pray. Like, we don't really want to sacrifice that. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It tells us, if my people who are called by my name, he's not talking to the world, friend. He's talking to us. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to the church. And if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, a.k.a. will you get so low in your life, will you get so low to the ground that will you humble yourself and, and pray and seek his faith? Because here's, here's, here's the posture, we'll see if I can get back up, uh, that you've got to have. It's right here. It's right there. We've got to have our faces to the ground and say, God, I am so broken for people. I am so broken for my family. I'm so broken for our city. I'm so broken for our church that I will lick the very nasty stage that I'm on top of right now if that's what it takes to lead more people to Jesus. We've got to humble ourselves and seek his face. You want to know what moves the heart of God? A broken and a contrite spirit is what the scripture tells us. That's what moves the heart of God. But you're like, well, Matthew, he's just not talking to me. He's just not, I'm just waiting on God. Could it be that God's waiting on us? I think God's waiting on the church in America to say, okay, we're going to pray. We're going to humble ourselves. We're going to, the River Church, we're going to get flat on our faces and we're going to humble ourselves before God and then God will show up. I guarantee if you'll pursue him, he is pursuing you. He will show up. Because here's what we got to grab and what we got to understand, that prayer is a lifestyle. It's not an event. It's not a task. It's not something you can just check off and move on down the road. It's not like, oh, that's just great. I did it. I mean, it's, just, it's good. Reminds me of like, like climbing or like, I, how many bike cyclists do we have? Like real cyclists, like you actually ride like a road bike, anything. All right, you know what I'm saying? None here, okay. Well, I was once one. All right, so for about a week. And so, and so I got the tights, I got the whole get up, you know? It's like, anyways, they don't fit anymore. And it's like, they just don't make double XL like they used to. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Anybody with me on that? Like double XL used to fit. Apparently, they're not making it the same, all right? But you know, man, I watched the Tour de France last month. That's stupid. I just want to say that right away. Like, that's some crazy stuff. Like, they're climbing, like, these mountain, like, climbs. Like, 10% grade for, like, 100 miles. Not smart. Like, I mean, but you know, there's these moments. What's amazing to me is they just keep churning. Because that's just their lifestyle. And it's just one more res revolution of the, of the pedal. Just one more. For some of you, that's what you need to do right now. You, you're in this uphill climb of life. Can I just tell you? Just put your foot on the pedal and just push down one time. And when that other side comes back up, all you got to do is do it one more time. And the other side's going to come back up and you're going to do it one more time. And you just keep, we're, we're not asking you to pray, you know, like 24 straight hours. I'm asking you just to start praying because here's why it's so important because prayer gives us power my friends it gives you power it will empower you right now it gives you power prayer gives us the confidence to keep going that God's hearing us that he's gonna he's gonna just take the next step can I tell you today the power is very clear you're like well I don't know if I believe that God has a track record of showing up 
You can see it through scripture. I can tell you in the last week, I can think of five with three of them being miraculous type things that God showed up and answered prayers that I've been praying for myself about my family and about people in our church. Five of them. I could share them with you right now, but I'm not going to. Show up on Saturday morning. That's where I share that information with those people. But it gives us power because God has a track record. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, 9. It says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. It's a guarantee. He is the faithful God. Anybody know a faithful God today? Hello? Four of you do. That's good. Keeping his covenant or his promise of love to a thousand generations. Can I tell you, it wasn't for one generation. It wasn't for two generations. It just wasn't for three generations. For thousands of generations. Can I tell you today, River Church, you are part of one of those generations that God is saying, I'm keeping my promise with you. I will be faithful to you as long as you're faithful to me. If you're in the process and I'm in the process, then guess what? I'm going to show up for you over and over over and over again, but you've got to figure it out. You've got to start talking to me. There's a part of this that we've got to play. See, I'm here to tell you that when your prayer life increases, your life will change. Changes. I am a living testimony of that. My wife's right here to my right. She can tell you Over the last six years, I am a completely different human being, am I right, than I was six years ago. And it's it's nothing that I've done, and we're not talking about my weight. I mean, seriously, like some people are like, yeah, I think that was five years ago. I'm like, no, that was 20 pounds ago. That's how we figure things at our house. That was 20 pounds ago. But literally, I'm here to tell you, like, I can tell you that my life is changed. I can show you when our church started to pray with reckless abandon and we started to build a culture of prayer that our church went from one place to a completely different place. And I'm here to tell you, if we'll go to yet another place, there's a bunch of people who desperately need us to do it because they need to give their life to Jesus because today could be their day of salvation. But we gotta pray. You want the blessing of God, the favor of God. You want to flourish with God, hello? Then you got to pray. Well, I don't think I need to pray, Matthew. Jesus himself prayed. And we've got people who are like, well, you know, prayer, it's overrated. Is it really that important? I mean, let's just look at Luke 5. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him, talking about Jesus, of their infirmities. So he himself, Jesus, every once in a while, or what does it say? Often. Often. Help me. Hey, grunters over here, barkers, can't help me out, all right? He himself did what? Often. Often withdrew into the wilderness and did what? Prayed. Prayed. He prayed. But some of you are like, well, I don't know that I need to pray. Can I tell you, the scriptures tell us that we are to be imitators of Christ. You want to imitate somebody? Start imitating Jesus. And I guarantee your life will be so much better. You're going to be an imitator of Jesus Christ. And part of the imitation is this, very simple, is you need to often go into a time of prayer. So let's get practical. My time's about gone. So I want to look at the problem, I want to look at the solution, and I want to look at the potential of prayer, all right? You with me? I'm going to talk fast. The problem is this. Some of you say, well, we don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray, Matthew. Can you think of something in your life that you are not very good at that you love to do? Anybody with me? Can you think of something? For me, it's like working on my car, like simple oil change. Had a friend tell me, he goes, you know, you're paying too much money to go down there to Valvoline. It's like you're paying $90. You really could do it for like $12. Seriously? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know how. He goes, let me help you with it. It's called YouTube. It will show you everything. Next thing I know, it's you literally turn three things. The filter, the knob, and the oil thing off the top that you put the funnel in. The filler thing. I've been paying 90 bucks for this. Some of you college guys should start taking notes. You guys could do something on campus. It's a couple ramps. We hook you up. Do it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. 
Some of you, that's where you're at in your prayer life. Well, I just don't know how to pray, Matthew. Well, let me help you. It's very simple. You just need to learn to pray. Have you taken time to really learn how to pray? Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what steps to take. Well, it could be very simple. Just go find a model and model yourself after it. You're like, well, that kind of sounds crazy. Six years ago, my friends, that's exactly what I did. I didn't know how, so I found a model and I just replicated it. And I've twisted it and turned it a little bit since then. That's how you learn. You just find a model and just do it. And I'd love to give you that model, to get very practical with you if you'd want to grab a coffee. I'll help you do that. But you got to learn to pray. Some of you are like, well, I just get bored when I pray. Anybody with me on that one? I just get bored. Like, some of you, like, your prayers consist of, man, you pray for your food and you pray for your sore back and that's it. You know what I'm like, Thank you, Jesus. And, like, that's your prayer because you're like, I, there's no way I could ever pray from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. for one hour. You're like, I would fall asleep. You won't fall asleep in this room because it's going to be 67 degrees, all right? I'll make sure you stay awake with the temperature, all right? Guarantee it. But I'm here to tell you, like, well, well I, I don't know. Like, I just don't know how I could ever do that. You'll never know until you learn. Because here's what happens. I was the same way, but what quickly began to happen is you develop your prayer life. You stop praying all about yourself and something turns. And then you begin to start praying for others. And then you start praying for zip codes that you don't even live in because you want to pray that those people come to know Jesus. And then you start praying for countries in the 1040 window where there's Muslims and they don't know Jesus. And the next thing you know that they would experience dreams and visions. And by the way, God's answering that prayer right now. There's Muslim people who don't have the Bible in their language at all, who are giving their lives to Jesus because he's showing up to them in a dream. And that's happening because people are praying. Oh, Matthew, if you only knew where I came from. Our family, like, yeah, it's, it's kind of sketch. Well, can I tell you, if prayer connects you to God, it also connects you to another family called the family of God. Well, Pastor Matthew, you, you don't know. Like, I, I, I come from a pretty rough background, you, you, you don't, there's no way a holy God would ever listen to me. Anybody ever feel that way? I'm broken and sinful. Look at James 5. I think it will knock this out of the park for you. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Elijah, for instance, was what? Just like, and he prayed hard that it wouldn't rain and it didn't, not a drop. And he goes on to say that. Here's the deal. Elijah was human. Elijah doubted God. Elijah was depressed. Elijah wanted to die. Elijah was like, take me out. Elijah was hungry. Anybody ever been depressed? Anybody ever want to give up? Anybody feel overwhelmed? Anybody ever have anxiety? Anybody ever have any of that stuff going on? Anybody ever have fear? Well, can I tell you? Elijah did too, but guess what? Because Elijah prayed hard, and he's human just like you and me, somehow, here's what you need to hear. The sin in you and the doubt in you and the, and the anxiety in you is not greater than the Savior who wants to live in you. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Hello? Somebody today needs the Spirit of God to show up, and you need to hear that today because you're questioning if you made the right decision. You're questioning if you can do this. You've got fear. You've got anxiety. You've got doubt. You've got depression. You feel overwhelmed. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to. You just got to do the second thing, find the solution, which means you got to start talking to God. Prayer is very simple. It's all about communication. No relationship at all on the face of the earth is going to be successful if you don't communicate. My wife and I, if we do not communicate, we are not going to have a healthy relationship. We used to communicate in what we would call our football cheering voices in our younger days of marriage. You know what I'm saying? You with me? It's kind of loud. And now we use our library voices to communicate. And I don't communicate. No, I'm just kidding. But, but the reality is, is we got to communicate. If we're not communicating, it's going to, how, how do you, how does she know she, I love her if I'm not communicating that to her? How does Jesus and God know that you love him if you're not communicating with him? You've got to start talking to God. It's not rocket science. And I want to say this, and here's the deal. Nicole and I, we communicate multiple times a day. Like, it's not like I see her in the morning for a couple minutes, two or three minutes, fist bump. Hey, babe, good to see you. It's going to be a good day. Yeah, good. You're my bro. All right, you know, move on. No, throughout the day. 
Hey, babe. What up? <laughs> use that. I use my special voice. Hello. You've reached Pastor Matthew. No, I'm just kidding. But we have, we talk. Not once. Often. Here's, what, here's the exercise I want to do really quick and we're going to be done. Everybody grab your cell phone real fast. You got them with you. I know you do. Just grab them. Some of you are taking notes on them, and some of you are texting, and some of you are, like, ordering DoorDash, all right? So, you got your phones? Let me see them. Hold them up. Wave them around, all right? I want you to open up your contacts right now. Open up your contacts. Now, I want you to add a contact. And the con- I'm not giving you my number, all right? My contact, the contact is going to be this. I want you to name the contact Jesus. And now periodically throughout the rest of the day and the rest of this week, I want you to spend some time and just whenever you feel like it. Hear you, Lord. (laughs) Maybe put that on mute, all right? I want you to, you're fine. (laughs) That was great. That was the Lord, all right? Just, uh, Just text him what you're thinking. Hey, Dad, just wanted to tell you I love you. Hey, Heavenly Father, I'm going to need some strength this afternoon. Hey, Papa, can you do this? And I just want you just to send it to him. I just want you to just keep track. I don't know where those are going to go. Actually, I think there is a number I'm being told now from our first hour because they started texting it, and I'm getting returned. It's like, hey, this is what I got back from God, all right? And I'm like, oh, if you actually hear back from God himself, like Jesus himself, I would love to. All right, praise the Lord for that phone. All right, uh, I would love to hear if you hear that. Actually, you know, some of you, you text so much. I learned this today that we have, there's a, there's a thing in America today called texting, text neck. And it's actually because it's, they're finding, like, people, because you're doing this, it's actually a bone on the back of your neck is sticking out. Like when you bend your neck, it sticks out. And it's called, yeah, this is great. I got like nine guys over here doing it. It's called text neck. So when you're, when, you're, when you're texting all the time, why don't you just text God once? You're like, this is crazy. This makes no sense. I'm very simple. It is crazy. I'm just trying to get you to communicate with the greatest love of your life, Jesus. First Thessalonians tells us, pray without ceasing, a.k.a. communicate continually with God. Literally, uh, you're conceding your agenda to him. Fi- finally, the four- third thing is this. You have the potential of peace and purpose in your life. How many people want some peace and purpose in their life right now? I think we can all know and admit that there's stress in our world today. I mean, 84% of adults today survey in America, according to the uh, uh, APA, say, like, hey, they got stress that is beyond any form that they can handle right now. 67% of them say that, that America is just one of the most stressful places in the world. That's how Americans feel about it today. But I'm here to tell you that you can have true peace, and it comes through prayer. You can have it today. I'm talking the kind of peace when you lay your head on the pillow at night. You can rest. You're not getting woke up by what you're worried about, about what you're anxious about, or any of that, because you've surrendered it to God. Remember that? You've done this. It's all yours, God. Find true rest and peace. Matthew 11 tells us, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you what? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Can I tell you today, friends, my peace does not come from answered prayers. My peace comes from God. Because God hasn't answered all my prayers the way I thought he should. But you know what? I trust because he's got a track record that he's God. And the amazing part is, is when you trust him and you get that peace, all of a sudden then he begins to say, here's the purpose that I have for you. And then you begin to live out that purpose. Can I tell you today, the more I pray, here's what I'm starting to realize though, is there's going to be moments where God just kind of nudges things back across the table to you. He pushes them back across to me. I've been praying for my, my, my siblings who don't know Jesus right now yet. 
I've been praying for them. Lord, would you just, here's been my prayer. Lord, would you put somebody in their path that could tell them about you? And you know what the Lord has done to me? He's taken that request and he's shoved it right back in front of me. And, and when it comes to me, then I'm like, And for six months, we've done this. Fought. Because here's what I, I've recognized. Hear this and then I'm done. If prayer rarely leads to action in your life, you're doing it wrong. If, if prayer never moves you into live out your purpose, then you're praying wrong. The potential for your life is absolutely crazy. God wants to bless you today. God wants to pour his favor out on you today. God wants to, we're not talking about a little trickle of a stream, friends. We're talking about like he wants to pour out like Niagara Falls, Victoria Falls, just showering his blessing on you. And I'm not talking about money and cars and all that. I'm talking about his power your potential for your life is crazy. The potential for your, for your kids is crazy, for your marriage is off the charts, for your family off the charts. The deal is this though, it's never going to happen unless you pray. So are you ready? Hello? These are not rhetorical questions now. Are you ready to pray? Here's my question. Would you give me and us at the River Church 21 days of your life? Would you? And your life will be radically changed, I'm here to tell you. If you'll just follow the plan, I'm a living testimony of it. Your life will be radically changed. Father, I pray right now. I pray right now that you would just show up. We've surrendered ourselves. We've asked for you to speak. So God, I'm asking that you would do that right now. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want to ask a quick question. Anybody in the room today say, you know what? I don't even know who Jesus is and I need to have a, a personal relationship with Jesus. I don't, I don't even have that. Today, I want to give my life to him. Is there anybody like that today? I just want to slip your hand up right where you're at. Anybody else? So I need to know who Jesus is for the first time. If you can keep them up, that helps me to see you, see you. Anybody else, just put your hand up right where you're at. Yeah, there's like three of you. I'd love to chat with you and help you with that process. Who else in the room today would say, you know what, Matthew, I would love to have somebody pray God's blessing and favor over me right now. Anybody like that? Just slip your hand up right where you're at. Man, I, I need somebody to pray over me right now. Anybody else? Yeah. You can put them down. Some of my prayer team, I think, is still here. My wife and myself, um, Zeb and Levi are coming. Um, Ryan, if you can help me, that would be awesome. Um, and then we're going to just kind of kind of line up across the front of the stage. Amy's going to finish our time and we're going to worship, but as we worship, we would love to pray over you. Love to pray over you, but you're going to have to make a move. You're going to have to make the move. <laughs>